AEW has over 200 wrestlers and staff signed to the company and with only 4 hours of TV a week, it means that a good portion of those workers don't get regular TV time. But there are many wrestlers on the AEW roster that just disappear months at a time and there are some that we haven't seen on AEW in ages and nobody really knows why. And today we're going to discuss a few of those cases so like the video, subscribe and let's discuss the missing AEW wrestlers who just kind of disappeared and why they have been gone. On February 24th, 2021, it was announced that Paul White had signed for AEW and this was a really shocking signing at the time. Like, I for one never thought the big show would ever leave the WWE, so it was kind of crazy to see and also an unexpected move from AEW's part. Paul White came into AEW as a coach and a commentator for the new AEW Dark Elevation series, but early on he had spoken about the switch from WWE to AEW and said there were things he could do now that he was being held back from doing in the WWE and it was indicated early on that Paul White would be getting in the ring in AEW. And that time would come in that same year as he would start feuding with QT Marshall leading up to All Out 2021 and they had a match on the card where Paul White of course just squashed the guy. Such a random match on AEW's best show ever, but he would stick around and wrestle on Dark for the next month, competing in two handicap matches and just squashing and throwing guys around in classic Paul White Big Show style. But then after this, he would stop appearing as a wrestler on Dark and he would randomly come back in March of 2022 to squash someone on Dark Elevation out of nowhere but then would go inactive again as a wrestler. And it wouldn't be until November of 2023 when he made his shocking AEW return and his most shocking AEW appearance so far when he returned to Dynamite as he was revealed as the Golden Jet and Kota Ibushi's partner to face the Don Callis family. It was a very unexpected move and when people saw Paul White, I think they very quickly noticed why he's been out of action for a while. Oh boy. But these guys would square off in that 4v4 match in a street fight two weeks later, and it was an awesome match. It very much delivered, and Paul White took some crazy bumps for this match. And after this, it was back off TV for Paul White, as he would have one more match, which wasn't even an AEW official match, as himself and Chris Jericho would reunite as Jericho on the Jericho Cruise, and then he would step away from the ring once more again in order to get knee replacement surgery. And like, wow, couldn't have guessed he needed that. Not at all. Didn't see that one coming. And Paul White has not been seen on AEW programming since that street fight. But back in March of this year, he said he would be returning to the ring imminently. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him maybe have a match before the year ends. But as of right now, Paul White is missing from AEW and kind of just disappeared off TV. Penelope Ford is an AEW original, having been around since she was announced as a signing very shortly after AEW had just formed as a company. She would debut for the company at All Out 2019 in the Women's Casino Battle Royal, where she got a bit of offense in and then was quickly eliminated and dumped out by eventual winner Nyla Rose. AW Dynamite would debut as a show in October of that same year, but Penelope Ford wouldn't be on it immediately, but would actually feature on the first episode of AEW Dark in a losing effort, and she would become more of a regular fixture on Dark over TV, but when the pandemic hit, she would start featuring more prominently on Dynamite, and would make her first appearance on the show in March of 2020, and start appearing more on the show from there, while still being a regular on AEW Dark. She would make her pay-per-view debut at that year's Double or Nothing, and a loss to Chris Statlander, but soon after would earn a shot at Hikaru Shida's women's title, and this match would happen on the 1st of July Dynamite, with Shida retaining the title in a really good match, with Penelope proving that she can go. Funnily enough though, her next match after this on Dynamite would be in that 3-on-1 handicap match with her and Rebel and Britt Baker teaming against Big Swole, which if you don't know, is maybe one of the worst AEW matches of all time, 
to be fair, it wasn't really through any fault of her own, but it's a match I've mentioned many times on this channel because it's just not a good one. Like I said, not really Penelope's fault though. After this though, her dynamite appearances would become a lot more occasional as she became a mainstay on Dark, and throughout 2021 would only rarely appear on Dynamite and she would be appearing to lose. In September though, she would get a TV program when herself and The Bunny would start feuding with Ty Conti and Anna J. They would exchange singles and tag team wins for the next couple of months on Dynamite and Rampage, culminating on the New Year's Eve Rampage episode in a street fight with Ty J winning in a brutal and awesome match and a match that is seen as one of the best of the AEW women's division and this is definitely Penelope Ford's best AEW match. But then after this she would be off TV dealing with injury and wouldn't be back until August of 2022 and upon returning she would get more frequent TV time across Rampage and Dynamite as well as Dark of course but was still mainly losing matches and her last AEW TV appearance to date came on the 5th of October 2022 Dynamite. And other than a couple of dark matches afterwards, she's not been seen in AEW since. And fans have been left confused and wondering where she had gone, and eventually it was revealed, and it's unfortunately due to heartbreaking reasons, as in April of 2023, Penelope Ford and Kip Sabian would open up about how they were expecting, but unfortunately there was a miscarriage. And as a result of Penelope's pregnancy, a fibroid had grown which required surgery, rehab and recovery for Penelope Ford. No time frame has ever been given on her recovery and when or if she'll be back, but she deserves all the time she needs and hopefully in the future we do see Penelope Ford on AEW programming again. Jamie Hayter made her first AEW appearance on the 23rd of October 2019 Dynamite, the fourth ever AEW Dynamite as she faced Britt Baker in a losing effort, but she had a good showing and this was a lot of people's first introduction to her, mine included, and a lot of people became instant fans, also myself included. Prior to these appearances, she had been working for Stardom in Japan and on the British wrestling scene, which she would return to after this appearance, but she would eventually return to to AEW as she returned on the August 13th 2021 episode of Rampage, aligning herself with Britt Baker and Rebel, and upon returning she wasn't an instant top star, but she was in a good spot on TV, being in Team DMD, because it meant that she was involved in anything Britt was doing and got regular TV time for the next year. They were even teasing dissension between herself and Britt from very early on, and even though Jamie wasn't presented as the biggest star in the group, fans became very respectful receptive to her and were hoping to see her receive a big push. And she would get numerous title shots and big opportunities such as being in the Owen Hart Classic in 2022 but would always fall short, including at All Out 2022 when Jamie Hayter would be involved in a four-way match to determine the new interim women's world champion which Tony Storm would win and then at full gear Tony Storm would defend that interim women's title against Jamie Hayter and in this match Jamie Hayter would defeat Tony Storm to to become the new interim AEW Women's Champion herself, and to make things even better, it was confirmed on the next Dynamite that this title reign was no longer an interim one and she was now the AEW Women's World Champion. The win was an unexpected one but a very welcomed one and as the Women's World Champion, Jamie Hayter in my opinion had a great reign and is the best AEW Women's World Champion so far as she held the title for just over half a year and had some great title defenses against the likes of Emi Sakura and Hikaru Shida on TV, then she beat Ruby Soho and Soraya at Revolution 2023 amongst other title defenses but she would lose the belt at Double or Nothing 2023 in a match that was a borderline squash match as Tony Storm absolutely destroyed Jamie Hayter to win back the title. And this was done because prior to this match, Jamie Hayter had got injured and well, it turns out this injury was a serious one as she had to drop the title just like that and she's literally not been seen in AEW since. 
To this day, the full extent of the injury is unknown. At first, it was reported she dislocated her shoulder, but that usually has a quicker recovery time than over a year, so who really knows? And a lot has happened since Jamie was last around, like the outcasts were also still around, and Tony Storm wasn't even timeless yet. And yeah, Jamie Hayter's injury has been a bit of a mystery, and nobody has really known what the time frame of her return is gonna be. However, just today, it was reported by Fightful Select that there are current pitches being made involving Jamie Hayter suggesting that a return could be near and if it were me I would just do her versus Mercedes are all in but I don't think that's gonna happen I could see all in though being where she makes her return and that would also be awesome and I am very much looking forward to seeing Jamie Hayter on AEW TV again hopefully it's soon Guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then smash the like button and subscribe for more wrestling content and turn those notifications on to be the first to see that wrestling content. I'll see you all in the future. Goodbye and keep on rolling.